Hello everyone, my name is Samantha from Living Sunglass and in today's video we're going to discuss five reasons you may want to use a light box. Now if you're brand new to stained glass or you've been learning alone at home, you may not even know the benefits of using one. So let's uncover some of those reasons now. Number one, checking colors. Have you ever spent loads of time choosing all of the glass for a project using the room lighting only to discover later on that they don't even look the same when you put them in the window? Using a light box makes the process of checking colors so much easier. By laying the glass out on the light box when it's not lit, it allows you to see the glass in ambient light, which is the same as the room lighting around you. And then with the flick of a button, you can see what they look like backlit. This also helps to make sure that when you view all of the glass backlit together, you still have that cohesive look and that all of the colors go together the way you want. Two, tracing patterns. Now there could be a couple of reasons to do this. A, you might be in need of a copy of a pattern and not have a photocopier handy. Or B, maybe you've already made a pattern and now you wanna use that pattern as a reference and make some changes or modifications to it. In this case, you can trace the portions you want to keep and then make up the rest however you see fit. Number three, lining up the glass for the pattern. Choosing where on the glass to put your pattern piece based on the coloring of the glass can be an important thing to consider in the artistry of making stained glass. If there are variations in the coloring in a sheet of glass, then choosing the darker parts to be used as the shaded areas in the design will add a bit more depth to the look of your finished piece. And the same goes for the brighter areas in a design. Using the lighter parts of the glass for the brightest areas of the design will emphasize even more depth. Number four, cutting pattern pieces. For light colored cathedral glass, it can be easy to cut out by placing the glass on top of the pattern and looking through the glass to cut it out. This is often referred to as trace cutting or the English method. However, this gets much more difficult to do with darker colored cathedral glass and next to impossible to do with opalescent glass unless you have a light box. Number five, when you're painting. When doing traditional glass painting, you need to work with the glass backlit. This is obvious when making what we call trace lines, since this is done by placing the drawing under the glass and painting a solid stroke or tracing the pattern. But it's even more important when building up the detail in a piece. The shading, for example, is often done by matting the paint across the glass and then scraping away some of the paint to let the light through. It's important to do this with light behind the glass since the paint is basically used to control the amount of light passing through it. So maybe you've decided that you're going to use a light box and you might be wondering what you should look for in one. This is really going to depend on your needs, budget, and the amount of space that you have. I used to use a homemade version which was essentially a box with four sides, a bottom, and a notched edge cut into the top opening. A light bulb was mounted into one of the sides, and then two pieces of glass were used in the opening with a piece of parchment or wax paper inserted between the two glass layers to help diffuse the light. Now, this worked just fine for quite a while, but it was a bit cumbersome and oftentimes not quite large enough for the paintings that I wanted to do. So I did some research and I bought a light pad that is sold for art purposes that was larger than the homemade light box I had, but it was super slim and could be easily stowed away under my workbench or even in a drawer. The one tip that I would suggest if you're going this route is that you get a piece of window glass the same size as the light box to place on top of it. This is because the light box is made with a soft plastic type of surface and sliding small glass pieces around on it will cause some scratching. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> so now I always work with a clear sheet of glass on top of the light pad to protect it. So I'm going to put some links below the video for the light pad that I use. So if you're in the market for one, go ahead and check that out. And if you use a light box already and you use it for more purposes with your glasswork than what I've shared, please leave a note in the comments as I'd love to hear about it. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please click the like button and share it with your friends. While you're at it, click the subscribe button and hit the bell to get notifications every time I upload a new video. 
See you next time.